Good Sunday morning to our Facebook and Zoom brethren. Welcome to the New Life Church of Faith Sunday School Session in Champaign and Danville, Illinois. We bring you greetings from Pastor Thomas Miller and First Lady, Sister Beverly Miller. Today's lesson, we will continue in our series of communicating with God and we'll have the second part of our topic within communicating with God called um, talking to and with God. Our teacher is Minister Charlene Randall. We welcome you to participate in our lesson by writing your questions in the chat box, either on Zoom or on Facebook. So without further delay, let us hand our lesson over and our teaching over to Minister Charlene Randall. Good morning. Um, God bless each and every one of you and thank you for coming on this morning and we're gonna pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. A day, God, that you have given us, Lord, to honor you, Lord God. That is our purpose on this earth is to give you glory, Lord. So what we do today, Lord God, let us give you glory in all of our actions, our thoughts, our words, our deed, Lord. Father God, I pray that this lesson will be embedded in our minds and that we won't be forgetful hearers, Father, and that we hold this word and hide it in our hearts, Lord, so that we will not sin against you, that the new information that we receive, Father God, that we use it for your glory. So Father God, I ask that you just stand me up in the spirit right now, Lord. Let me speak what you would have me to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we covered quite a bit of ground um, last week. Um, I said that I was gonna talk about the who, what, when, where, why, and how of, um, talking to God, but I also said, as I began to do the lesson, those six things started to meld together. And it's basically all one big thing. So we have to have all of those qualities, um, the who, what, when, where, how, and why um, in hearing from God. And I talked about relationship and, as we go on through this lesson today, please remember the relationship part. That's just so important. Um, you know, we, I talked about, you know, not being able to relate to someone if you don't have a relationship with them. When you have a relationship or as relationships begin to form, you get to know that person, you know the things they like and you know the things they dislike. Uh, you might even know their favorite color or their, their, their favorite uh, flower. Um, you, you know a lot of things about them. So we have to know God and we have to know what he wants from us. And that comes from having a relationship with God. And so we talked about praying God's word. And that's another thing that I want you to keep in your minds, how important it is to pray the word because the word, it destroys things. It's, it's the greatest weapon that we have. And it says that it's sharper than any, sharper, sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, and a two-edged sword is, is, is a powerful weapon. It cuts going in, it cuts coming out. I mean, it, it can tear some stuff up. Same with the word. So let's remember the relationship and how important it is to send God's word back to him when we pray. 
So the what of prayer, it says prayer is communicating with God and prayer involves what Minister Odette and Minister Christine have taught over the past five weeks, talking, hearing, and listening. And I will add obeying, okay? It doesn't do any good to hear God if we don't do what he asked us to do. And, um, you know, some people say, well, I don't hear from God and we hear from God in everything. But you know, it said it was not in the fire or the wind, it was in the still small voice. We can hear from God. Um, I'm an early riser. And uh, every morning when I get up, it's just habit. It's still dark when I get up in the morning and I look out my bedroom window, I lift the shade and that beautiful morning star in the east, it's so bright. And God is talking to me right there. This is my beauty. I made this. This is a new day. You know, so we do hear from God and we just have to, to listen for the things that he gives us. We hear from God through the animals you know, through the, the, the birds. And we, we know, uh, uh, you know, if we watch the animals, sometimes we can tell there's something amiss. I remember years ago, I had a cat and um, she was gonna have babies and she was acting really strange. And I was wondering what in the world is wrong with her? And lo and behold, right after she started acting that way, we had an earthquake. And I remember feeling it going up underneath the floor of my house. I actually felt it, but right before it happened. So God speaks to us in so many ways. Uh, so don't feel left out. Um, you say you don't hear from God. Um, sometimes God is silent with us, but you know, that's for another time. But we do hear from God on a daily basis. And so prayer, there are, are different kinds of prayer. Um, there is, um, you know, I think, okay, I'm gonna go ahead with this one. Um, prayer of thanksgiving, thanking God for what he has done and is doing and will do. Prayer of repentance, Admitting our wrongs, confessing our sins. We can find that in Daniel 19 and 20, uh, Psalm 51, 1 through 17. Uh, prayer of supplication, asking or begging for something earnestly or pleading humbly, 1 Samuel 1, 11 and Daniel 9 and 23. And, um, you know, that's some scriptures that you can look up. They're powerful. Uh, we know about Daniel who, who, um, after his adultery with Bathsheba, prayed this prayer to God once he realized that, that the prophet was talking about him. And so he went to God. So um, when we repent, you know, repent means turning away from. But I know that sometimes the enemy lies to us and we find ourselves saying, well, you know, I messed up this time. And, but we, you know, God says, be ye holy for I am holy. And um, we have to find a way to not just work through the things that we do wrong, but to ask God to help us with those things. And if we're honest, we can identify with the things that get us over and over and over and over again. So there's a prayer of intercession also and a prayer for ourselves and for others. There's warfare prayers when we battle for ourselves and others um, concerning what Satan and his demons are doing. So these are just a few types, okay? Um, there is no formula for prayer, okay? There's a lot of books out. There's a lot of things. There is no formula or no magic wand. But the only thing I'm gonna say is pray the word. 
pray the word because it is alive, it's quick, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, okay? It pierces and divides asunder between the soul and the spirit. And we know that the, 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 the soul is our mind, will, and emotions. And what the soul wants to do, it can cut through that so that we can walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. So if, if you are inclined to pray one type more than another, I would like to say that that could very well be your calling in prayer. Some people are intercessors, okay? Um, if you pray for maybe one thing more than another, as I said last week, I pray for our nation um, and have been for the longest time on a daily basis. And I have certain scriptures in the Bible that I use to target that because I can, I can feel sorry for, let's say, you know, what's going on now with the Ukrainian people. But if I don't have a word that's going to help them, sorry doesn't get it. We have to pray the word. So um, we're going to go to the next slide. So the win of prayer. All right. So we know that we can pray anytime. And I put at the top, it's like a walk-in clinic. I just put what the Lord gave me as I was doing this lesson. No appointment needed. Okay. You can just anytime, um, maybe you're, See, we don't pray when we should. We react and then we pray. And I need help with that too. We need to get to a place where we pray before we react. That the word supersedes everything. And sometimes I'm successful with that and sometimes I'm not. But I am trying to get to a place because um, if you know something wrong, then you should try to do something about it, but the enemy is cunning and uh, he deceives us. And he, he, he makes us think that we are okay when we're not, you know, that I'm not as bad as this person and at, at least I'm, I'm not a murderer and I'm not a rapist or, but you know, there's other things and we have to be aware of the cunning of the enemy. So Psalm 55 and 17 says, evening, morning, and at noon, will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. And verse 19 says, God will hear and afflict them. And so when we have words like this, when we pray the word, um, you know, I talked about the scripture last week where I found that uh, God says that he will undo what the enemy has done, that he will um, uh, ask God to turn the enemies back to you. Um, I have a book called Prayers That Rout Out Demons. And it has all kinds of prayers in it, prayers for our nation, prayers over the gates of the city, uh, prayers for revelation, um, every kind of prayer you can think of. And, and, and um, the homework's already been done because the scriptures are in the book. And I take that book out. And, and you know, when I pray, uh, when I do warfare prayer, I walk. You know, other prayer, I can get down on my knees, but warfare prayer, I, I, it just seems like I have to walk back and forth when I'm doing that. And I walk back and forth with that book in my hand and I pray. And I know that it's breaking up something because I'm not praying out of desperation or, or just pulling out words from my soul, but I'm praying from my spirit, the word of God. And so, like I said, praying the word is so important. Um, so Colossians 1 and 3 says, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Colossians 1 and 9, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. 
Ephesians 6 and 14, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we're, we're not just supposed to pray all the time. Uh, we're supposed to, and pray about everything, but we're supposed to pray for one another. Okay, so I ask you the question, um, after you leave church on Sunday, see, this is just to make us better. It's not a judgment call or anything like that. Um, it's to make us better. So maybe so we'll start doing something different. So after you leave church on Sunday, is that where you lead your fellow brother and sister? Do you ever lift them up in prayer? Um, even the, the, the people that we don't know that pastor may say, pray for this family or pray for that family. Um, do you remember that person? Because, um, you know, they're still going to need prayer after that initial prayer. So do you remember people? And it takes a heart for, for uh, people and a heart for prayer to be able to do that. It's an unselfish. Prayer is an unselfish thing. It's, it's unselfish. So um, we have the parable, and I believe um, Minister Christine talked about this in her lesson. The unjust judge and the widow, Luke 18, 1. And it says, he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So always to pray means continuous, repeated action without implying about the time of the action, um, not fail by implication to fail in your heart, not to fail in your heart, not to faint, not to be weary, um, not to turn out to be a coward, it says, to lose one's courage. In the New Testament, generally it means to be faint hearted to faint or despond in view of a trial or difficulty. And in Luke 18, 1, it means to be slothful in duty. So it's our duty to pray. It's our duty when we um, hear things, um, when we find out somebody's sick. Yeah, to say, Lord, be with them, you know, at their bedside, Lord, bless them. That's all well and good, but that's not the word. And I'm just trying to, to get us to understand that sometimes things need to be changed. It's not just the pastor's duty to pray. It's not just the minister's duty to pray. What if you're so in tune with God that when you come up to a minister to get prayer, that you discern that they need prayer? and that they are at their wits end and that they need a word from the Lord. See, we're all connected and we're all family, but sometimes we get selfish. So we don't wanna turn out to be a coward, uh, to be slothful in our duty. Uh, if we look, you know, you say, well, pray always. Uh, we can in our daily walk, you know, um, pray. And um, we need to uh, call people to mind. Um, I remember one time my son-in-law had a vision and he saw this woman somewhere sit, I can't remember at all, Kelly would remember, sitting at a, a, a table or something. And, and he prayed, about that situation. And a lot of times, you know, like I said, it's that still small voice. It's not a boom or, you know, a loud thing. Uh, God will have us to pray for certain situations or he'll bring something to mind. Uh, we'll see somebody on the street. When we see a homeless people, we're not supposed to walk by and shake our head and say, my goodness. That is so awful. Why don't the city do more for homeless people? Well, why don't we do more for homeless people? 
You know, if we did what we were supposed to do, I don't think any of us would ever be in any kind of trouble because we'd be too busy about our father's business. So um, we're going to go to, oh, a binge means to vindicate, okay, to uh, retaliate, to punish. And our adversary, the enemy, is the devil, okay, and we want to punish him instead of having him punish us, okay? It takes prayer. We can pray against uh, 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 Satan and we can pray against the demons and the witches and the warlocks, but we got to know some things about them. And intercessory prayer takes you there into those places. Um, Deliverance and intercession are things that I'm a part of because of things that happen in my life. So we have to, like I said, find your place. We all pray, but there is a place that you belong in prayer, one place more than another. And in communicating with God, you can find out what that is. You can find out um, if you want to know. Okay, so we're going to go to the next page. Um, dear sister, um, uh, let me um, interject with some thoughts that are on Facebook. Amen. Deaconess Wiley, uh, Deaconess uh, Deborah Wiley, she said, yes, Lord, store up God's word. It's our armor. Be steadfast, diligent, and obedient 24-7. Hallelujah. Then we have Carmelita, Sister Carmelita Smith. Break down natural and spiritual in prayer through God's word. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So we're going to go to the next page. So the unjust judge did not fear God or man, okay? Um, he just did not want to be bothered anymore when the woman came to him and kept at him and kept at him. And actually what he did, I say, was selfish. He granted her request for himself. It was for him to keep her from worrying him any longer. But let me tell you right there, God will get done what he needs done, however he needs to get it done. This woman got on the judge's nerves, okay? So God is, God is our judge and he's, our, he's the only righteous judge. He's not like the unjust judge who just got tired of hearing the woman. God wants to hear from us. He wants to heal us, to comfort us, to deliver us, supply our needs and he wants us to pray for others and for all that's going on in the earth we can never pray too much never pray too much and he god wants to hear from you and me so as the world waxes worse and worse each day pray let us continue in prayer for all that comes across our ear gate and our eye gate we don't see or hear of the atrocities of this world to shake our head and say, what a shame. Continue in prayer for our families, our churches, our leaders, our schools, our enemies, our enduring strength in these last days. In the best times, pray. In the worst times, pray. No answer, pray. You get an answer, pray. God is at work. So Luke 21, 36 says, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man. So we have to pray, uh, you know, not to fall into temptation. We have to pray, Lord, um, place a hedge of protection around me. Uh, there's a scripture I pray, Lord, um, Put a watch over my house, Lord God. I declare in the name of Jesus that the enemy shall not spoil my dwelling place. Uh, that, that you watch over me when I sleep. That you set the angels all around my house. 
um, in the name of Jesus, set your angels at the gates of the city because he has given his angels charge over us. So why not take that advantage and use them? Um, we're in a time now where we just need to pray. Um, I have this strong, strong feeling that, you know, we come to church on Sunday. I'm, I'm kind of piggybacking on one thing that pastor said. Um, some people aren't coming back to church because of the virus, but they go every place else. Okay. So if we can come to church on Sunday, it's just me. Saints, can we get together and and maybe come and find our little corner in the church and intercede? Can we do that? I'm just putting it out there. Um, I know everybody may not be feeling this like I am, but we're in a place right now. I mean, yes, I pray here at home, but when the saints come together, where there are two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Not to say he's not here at my house. He's not at your house when you pray. Hey, I'm just putting that out there, okay? <laughs> We're going to move on. So the win of prayer. Um, Daniel, and I'm going to... Um, go there. Just give me a minute. I'd be happy to look up the other scriptures, um, sister. Luke 16, if you'd like. Luke 6, 12. Okay. So we have uh, Daniel 6 and 10, which verifies what I said before, that Daniel prayed three times a day. Um, we have Mama Candy that says, not just you, we need to come together in, uh, in here, desperate times, Father God wants us. And she put a heart and prayer emoji. So we're getting confirmation. It's serious that we need to come back um, in, in assembly, assembling of ourselves. Praise the Lord. Sister Bonnie Gaston said, yes, Lord, you are so right. Sister, if we all come together, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Daniel 6 and 10 says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So Daniel was a warrior in prayer and he prayed for the things that um, were going on around him and in his life. And, and um, we have to be prayerful also and just continue no matter what it looks like. So uh, go ahead with Luke 6 and 10. Um, I have Luke 6 and 12. 12. Yeah. Amen. It says, now it came to pass in those days that he, meaning Jesus, went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Amen. And, uh, uh, you I know, have Psalms 5 3, whenever you're ready, sis. Go ahead. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. Amen. Do you have 88? I'm, I'm turning there now. Amen. All right. <laughs> um, 88.13 says, but to you, I have cried out, O Lord. And in the morning, my prayer comes before you. 
That Amen. was Psalms 88, 13. Amen. And so, you know, as I said, the wind of prayer can be anywhere. You Amen. know, sometimes, um, you know, like I uh, got out a little bit yesterday and there was these little kids, uh, my goodness, screaming and hollering. And so that's a time for me to pray, Lord, please, you know, um, give those parents knowledge in how to raise their children, Lord. Let them um, not spare the rod, you know, and spoil the child, Lord. Um, show them um, what they need to do. You know, uh, you know, there's kids, little kids, telling their moms and dads what to do, um, you know, and that shouldn't be, you know? So every situation that we see, but see, we are so focused on what we're doing that those kind of sites become normal to us. They just become everyday stuff. And we sometimes don't, don't lift that situation up in prayer. It's just, oh, what, wow, there's another bad kid, you know? And, um, you know, I've heard people say, well, they're just mischievous. But do you know that the word mischievous means evil? So, we don't want to call them mischievous either. So it, it prayer is prayer is any time for anything, um, and and we need to train ourselves to to be. We need to be wired to do that. That that whatever we see, uh, you know, there's some loud music in my my neighborhood, and um, it's really funny. It was so loud the other night, I went and I stood in, I opened my door and I stood in the doorway and instantly that music went off. And it's like, you know what? I'm not going to put up with this distraction. I'm just not going to do it, you know? So we have to pray about the situations. There is something that I can do about that loud music. There's something, you know, I pray for my neighborhood. So we just have to continue to pray for the things that we know to pray for. And we'll go to the next page. Amen. As we progress on to the next page, we have a brethren on Zoom that says, hallelujah, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves with other believers. There is power in unity, our oneness or oneness. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when God says no, now, you know, we have times in our lives, now like when, when I was coming up, you could throw a tantrum if you wanted to, but you were going to get in trouble, okay? You best go sit down somewhere and be quiet because we asked for something and our parents said no. And, and, and like the kids in the mall yesterday, a little girl all up in the corner by the pop machine. I don't know what was wrong with her, but she was screeching, screeching, you know? And, um, because she didn't get something that she wanted or whatever. So when God says no, sometimes the answer is simply no. And 2 Corinthians 12 and 7 says, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, See, God knew, he knows us. He knows, and I'm just taking it down to 
natural stuff. He knows that if you marry now, that if you get that husband now, you don't know how to handle that. He knows that if you buy that house now, that, that you may get a big head, you know, and um, you may even stop coming to church. You may have found something, you know, that may take you away from him. He knows everything about us and he knows what's best for us. So he did not remove the thorn in the flesh from Paul to keep him from being proud. Paul received great knowledge and revelation from God and we see it now where people are puffed up and you can't talk to them and they, they, they walking with the nose up in the air because they uh, are prophets and preachers and teachers and and God doesn't give us those revelations or, or that information to be proud, proud people. And so he was trying to help Paul out here. Okay, and, 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 and it doesn't say anywhere where he prayed to have it taken away anymore. He must have got a revelation. Hey, God knows what's best for me. And I pray that we get that revelation too. So it was a no for Paul. And I believe he knew why. He could become very prideful concerning the revelations he had received. God knew it, he knew it. He accepted the no and would rather suffer in the flesh than to sin. He would gladly glory in his infirmities and walk in power than walk in sin of pride and defeat. Jesus, Jesus, our Jesus prayed three times in the garden of Gethsemane, but it was a no. He did not have an answer. He did not get an answer. He had to go to the cross. And in Matthew 26, 44, it says, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words. He, Jesus didn't want, he knew he had to, but he was human just like us. He was going to feel the pain of the nails. And he knew until his father took him back, he was going to feel that pain of what they were going to do to him when they crucified him. You know, the spear in his side and the thorns in his head. And not only that, the, uh, you know, words hurt the insults and the accusations that were hurled at him. You know, and, and that's why we can't get all puffed up because see, one day the people were praising uh, Jesus as he rode into the city on a donkey and then the next is crucify him. So we need to lean and depend on God, not on man because man will turn on you quicker than anything. So uh, we'll go to the next page. So God does say no. Um, Paul asked three times for the thorn in his side to be removed and it was not. So we don't, we don't wanna hear no, especially if it's a, uh, you know, a physical thing uh, like Paul. Um, I looked it up, that thorn in his flesh and uh, we don't really know. We don't really know. But uh, just one interpre interpretation said it might have had something to do with his sciatic. Okay. And, and I, I don't know if you've ever had sciatic pain. You, you can't sit. You can't stand. You can't lay. And it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of pain. It's, it's hard to describe. It's pain, but it's, it's just different. And you get no rest. You get no relief. It doesn't matter if you lay down. It doesn't matter if you stand up. Sometimes if you turn just the right way, you might get a little pressure off that nerve. There's not really much they can do about it because it's the nerve. So speaking of nerves, <laughs> oh my Lord. Um, you know, guilty, guilty, guilty as charged. 
I let people get on my nerves. Um, I like to do things right way, you know, like excellent and things like that. And, and, and people, you know, say, um, what do you call it? OCD or whatever. Um, I, you know, but I just like things the right way. And I, it, you know, some things go back to childhood. There were eight of us, well, actually nine. Uh, one of my sisters um, didn't live here. So there were eight of us in the house. You couldn't find a shoe, a sock. You couldn't find nothing. Everything was everywhere. And I said to myself, I was young, when I grow up and get my own place, I don't know where everything is. And you better believe it. I know where everything is. I can go to this house. Uh, I got a car I'm trying to sell and the person uh, that knows me said, you, you, I know you got your title. Yep, I know exactly where where the title to this car is. I know where everything is. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, um, excellence in spirit. I don't want to get into our next study, but excellence in spirit. If we've been called to do something, then we need to be excellent in spirit. Don't just do it, do it good. You know, go above and beyond. Um, go above and beyond what you're asked to do. So Romans 11, 33 and 34 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out for who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor. So when God says no to us, he knows why he's saying no. He doesn't have to tell us why he's saying no. It says that he, God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor? That speaks for itself. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Some things we just have to accept and and take God at his word. This is the word that tells us that, that his ways are past finding out. If he says no, then evidently there is a reason um, for that no. And his ways and thoughts, they're not like us. He's God. So some things we have to accept. If Ephesians 6 and 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. So just because God says no doesn't mean we stop praying for other things. You know, and I, I think that we may know in our spirits, like I said, there was no mention of Paul ever praying for that thing again to be removed. And if we, if we are in tune with God, we'll know that that no means no. Okay, you know how your parents say, don't you ask me that again? You know, it's a no. And God has a reason for that. But we still have to continue to pray. Um, we're going to go to the next. And I see that we are getting close to so there was a time, however, that God told Jeremiah not to pray for people, okay? Let me say that you don't ever wanna be in that place where God says, don't pray for them. Um, Jeremiah 11, nine through 14, and the Lord said unto me, a conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They are turned back 
to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my word, refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they will not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. These are the gods that have eyes and see not and ears that hear not and, 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 and feet and they can't walk and hands and they can't lift and a mouth and they can't speak. These were the gods that the people were worshiping. But they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of the cities were their gods. O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Therefore, pray not for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. So that's a dangerous place to be in. And you know, like I said, sometimes we pray for people. But there, who is their bail? Is, is it fornication? Is it drugs? Who is their bail? Who is your bail? Who is my bail? And we don't want to be in a place where God won't hear and he, he'll turn his back to us. That's an awful place to be. Um, and, and that's why we have to pray without ceasing. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak the mind, the will, the emotions. We can't do it without God, not at all. So we're gonna to go to the next page. So the where of prayer, there is no blueprint on where to pray. We just wanna make sure that we're not doing it for show so that others can see us as the hypocrites or pretenders or an actor under an assumed character, that's what hypocrite means, as the hypocrites were doing in Matthew 6, 5. Matthew 6, 6 tells us to enter into thy closet, and then the, uh, when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which, in, which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So see, we don't always need an audience. Uh, our where of prayer is is, is not so much a place as a position. It's not physically a closet with a door. It can be, but a, a quiet, a place that is quiet and away from the noises of the day. We are closing the door to all distractions. Your closet can be anywhere in your home. Mine happens to be where I'm at right now in my computer room because I had an experience in this room and it just connected me. Um, I do uh, what's called soaking prayer sometime. And one, one morning I was prompted to do a soaking prayer, which all you do is you just listen to music. Um, I like it without the words, not unless they're doing prophetic uh, singing or something. And you listen to the music and what you do is you wait uh, and you listen to what God is saying to you. And so before I started the, the prayer, I had this woman on, on my computer and she said, now, just, just go down on your knees. And she said, whatever God shows you, write it down. And when I went down on my knees, it was like, no, I'm not feeling much, you know, I'm not expecting much, but see, we always have to expect. And I, I can't tell you this day 
but this is what I saw, okay? I saw myself in a white dress with my feet on top of Jesus' feet. And that just brings tears to my eyes. With my feet on top of Jesus' feet and we were dancing. And I wrote it down in my journal because she said, oh, he'll, he'll speak to you. He'll show you something. And that's what I saw. So this room here where I'm at, this is where I pray because, and we don't always feel God, okay? I know it's not about a feeling, but there are portals, okay? There are portals. And I believe that this is the place where um, I receive from God the best, not my bedroom, not my living room, not my kitchen. It's this little computer room. And so find your place, okay? God may direct you to change your closet location from time to time. And closet as defined by Baker commentary is whatever helps to close the spirit in, my God, from distraction and thus make it feel alone with God. So wherever your spirit feels alone with God, and another definition, definition for closet is the soul's own fixed familiar place of resort for communion with God. So we can pray in our cars, on our job. We can pray in the hospitals, walking when we do our exercises, church, grocery stores. We can pray anywhere, but there's a special place, a concentrated place where we meet God. Okay, and that's, that's your closet, I believe. So as quoted by R. Glover in Baker's commentary, we should go in with a royal spirit. First Peter 2.9 tells us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We are not beggars. Uh, we can go to the next page. And I know we're getting 1052. We got a little time. Um, we only go as beggars, beggars when we feel that we're not qualified. Uh, when there's something standing in our way between us and God, um, unconfessed sin, our lifestyle, um, that's when we go as beggars. So the where of prayer, our place of authority, that's that place where we pull out that two-edged sword. That's Amen. that place where we use the word to, to pierce and divide asunder the, the, the soul and the spirit. And, the, and that's that place where we war and where we fight. That's our place of authority. And, and I just wanted to Put a reminder, remember when Elder Danny said in demonology class, when you know your position, it will change your condition. So that comes by us knowing our true identity in Christ, our position that can change our condition is knowing that we are seated at the right hand of the Father with Jesus. You got to get a picture of that. In, we got to get a picture of that in our heads. So keep in mind that our physical position is of no consequence, whether you're praying in the car, in the house, um, walking while you're doing your exercise, but where we are spiritually seated makes all the difference abiding in our spiritual position. And I said abiding in our spiritual position, which means we live there. We don't visit. We don't go visit prayer every now and then, but we live in a state of prayer. Our spiritual position is necessary. It's necessary that we know what it is that we're seated in heavenly places that we're interceding and, 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 and we have a right to be there. So we're gonna go to the next page and I think I may have to end with the next page, uh, it's 1055. Um, 
We can do nothing without God. John 15, five, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And you know, I'm gonna stop right there because I, I want Minister Odette to have time to do what she needs to do. But I pray that we concentrate on our, our position, our relationship, um, searching our hearts, not, not anybody else's, uh, but knowing what we need to do to be in the place where our prayers will be heard. Amen. Amen. Um, bless the Lord. I just want to read a few comments um, that we've been getting. Um, uh, Sister Candy Wright, our Lord has me calling out for these precious children, needing us to pray for them, the ones that have not one person to care or pray for them. We have um, Minister uh, Bonnie Gaston. It says, when if God says no, receive it and move on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Minister Candy, uh, uh, um, Sister Candy said, glory um, that she too was soaking this morning. Sister Carmelita Smith said, this is good. It's not for others. Definitely for me. Glory be God be the glory. A lot of amens, a lot of praise the Lord. Um, truly this word that we have gotten from the Lord through the vessel of Minister Charlene Randall is just so, so applicable and, and, and you know, great for us. Stay tuned. Part three comes next week on the study of communicating with God. And the subtopic that Minister Charlene has been teaching is on speaking, um, talking to and with God. Praise be the Lord. Um, we thank you for joining us in the New Life Church of Faith Sunday School session. We welcome you to join us at the New Life Church of Faith in Danville. We're located, located at 1419 South Bowman Avenue. In the sanctuary, we are practicing social distancing. And you, you all know the sanctuary is a thousand seater. Please come. We are not, um, you know, bottlenecked. We are truly um, moving about freely and we are seated very, very carefully. So we ask that you join us in the sanctuary and that we get to seeing each other, praying for each other, ministering to each other. We want to do that in Champaign and in Danville. However, if you're not able to join us, Pastor Miller will do a live broadcast via Facebook. And we ask that you join us here on Facebook at 12 o'clock noon for a live stream. And that starts promptly at 12 noon. Until then, we ask the Lord Jesus to bless you and keep you. We will um, give it back to Minister Charlene to end us out in prayer. Minister Charlene. Praise God. I uh, just want to remind everyone of what I had said about us coming together. Um, of course, I'll have to get it okayed, but you know, we used to meet on uh, Wednesday night at six o'clock. Um, we need it, we need it, we need it. So Father God, I thank you for this lesson, Lord, and Lord, for giving me what I need it and what I needed to be reminded of Lord and for allowing me to be your vessel Lord. And I ask that this word just not uh, fall to the ground Lord God that it be cultivated Lord God for without, uh, without a seed Lord God there is no growth Lord. So I'm just planting the seeds that you have given me, Father, and I pray, God, that you stand me up in the spirit to be able to walk in the path 
that you would have me to walk, Lord God, to perfect those things, Lord God, that are imperfect in my life right now, Lord God, to perfect those things that are imperfect in the other listeners' lives, Lord God. Lord God, we need to be in a place, Lord God, in our spiritual position, Lord God, where the enemy cannot accuse us, Lord God, and bring any judgment against us when we pray, God. So Father God, I lift up every viewer this morning. I pray that if there's anyone that, that needs salvation, that you will accept the Lord Jesus as your savior, uh, confessing that he is the son of God, that he died on the cross, that he rode on the third day and now sits at the right hand of the father in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just praise your name and we give you the glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. I have a final comment here from our Zoom. Um, Sister uh, Kelly says, my God, not about place so much as it is about our position. Good teaching, mama. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord, brethren. God bless you. And we'll Praise see you Lord. next week. Lord bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.